In the last lecture, we introduced the question of personal identity. Um, you know, what makes us the same people over time? What is it that makes us, each individual one of us, the person we are, right? And, you know, we saw that this is important for the question of what it would mean to survive death, whether it's even possible to survive death, that question as well, but also for approaching a few other questions, right? Um, you know, if you lost your memory, if you were afflicted with so-called Hollywood amnesia, would you be the same person, right? If we download people's consciousness to a computer, would that be them, right? You know, these science fiction films we see all the time, oh, the consciousness is downloaded to a computer, well, that's the same person. Would that really be true? You know, and, you know, we thought about those cases of reincarnation, assuming that they really do have the same memories. Are they the same person, right? So in the next few lectures, I want to dig into each of the theories of personal identity that I mentioned in the last lecture a bit more deeply. Remember, I talked about dualism, um, which you might also call the soul theory. Physicalism, I didn't call it this in the last lecture, but you might call physicalism the body theory. And then finally, memory, then this final theory that's kind of like memory, but maybe a little different psychological continuity, right? Remember I said three and a half. Psychological continuity, I'm not sure for reasons we will get into, is really a theory of personal identity. But it, you know, it talks about some of the, the same questions. It's in the same neighborhood. We will get into that more deeply as we go along. For right now, I want to talk about dualism. Dualism is so called because dualism will say there are two fundamental kinds of things, right? There is your body, this material stuff, you know, there is also your soul, right? Your soul is a different kind of thing than your body, according to dualism. And your soul is what's important, not your body. Your soul is what makes you who you are. So dualism will say same soul, same person. If you have the same soul, doesn't matter what the body might look like. Might not even matter if you don't have a body. You are the same person. So let's look at, you know, what dualism or the soul theory would say about all the sort of hard cases we've looked at. So reincarnation, you know, look, these cases are murky, but, you know, it seems like a lot of people will say, well, you know, this is the same soul, this is the same mental stuff. If that is, if these are real cases of reincarnation, again, I'm a little dubious, but if they are, and this is the same soul, then they are the same people, right? If Barbro Carlin really has Anne Frank's soul, then Barbro Carlin and Anne Frank are really the same people. If this little boy in Louisiana has the soul of this fighter pilot, then the little boy in Louisiana and the fighter pilot are really the same people. Let's look at the others, like person with Hollywood amnesia, right? Someone like Sue Mack who gets hit in the head with the ceiling fan, forgets who she is. Well, you would think she's the same person, even though she doesn't have the same memories, because she has this, the same soul, right? Now, like, like, look, one problem here, and I'll go back into this, is it might get a little hard to tell. It might get a little murky, right? Seems like she would have the same soul if there is, you know, if there is a soul, but if she gets hit in the head, how do you know her soul hasn't left, it hasn't been replaced, right? Doesn't seem like that would happen, but part of the problem that's going to be here with the whole idea of a soul is if it's really something so different from our body, how can you observe it how do you know it's really the same soul over time, right? 
So if you download your consciousness to a computer, well, the soul theory would say, the dualist theory would say, you're not the same person if, unless somehow your soul migrates when you download, but look, it doesn't seem like that. Why should just transferring your memories create a new soul or pull the soul from an old body to the computer, right? So reincarnation, yes. Hollywood amnesia, yes, we think. Downloaded to a computer, no, we think. All right. Well, now, dualism is a natural theory for a lot of people, right? But there are some problems with it. The main challenges to dualism, well, let's just go through them. One, and the first of these, many people do not think it fits with the scientific view of the world. You know, a lot of people will say, look, you dualists say that there's matter, there's the body, there's this material stuff in the world, like our bodies, like all this other stuff on my junk-filled desk I'm looking at. Okay, that, that, that stuff we're familiar with, but, you know, how does the soul, how does this radically different kind of thing, how does that fit in with the scientific view of the world that says, you know, everything's made of matter, right? You know, people will say, well, you know, positing the soul, it just seems... Some people would almost say superstitious, right? You know, seems like belief in, you know, I don't know, just superstitious seems like belief in, you know some kind of fairy tale from the past, right? That's what some people say. Now, quite honestly, a lot of philosophers are really swayed by this. They think it's really powerful. For reasons I'll get into more in the future, I don't really think that there's a lot of punch to this objection, right? You know, and the reason I don't think there's a lot of punch to this objection is I, I don't really know that we are as familiar with matter as we might claim to be, right? You know, you talk to scientists and they say, well, matter is also energy. You know, they'll talk about dark matter that we can't even observe, but we know it's there because of its gravity. You know, just, just for me, you know, I, I think our view, I think our understanding of the universe there's a lot we don't understand about matter, about what exists. The idea that the soul just can't fit in with that seems a little, a little presumptuous, a little arrogant to me, right? So a lot of philosophers are impressed by this. I'm, I'm not super swayed by it. Now, but what does sway me a lot more? What I do find a bit more disturbing with the soul theory is that the soul seems unobservable, right? You know, th think back to this last one, right? Is the person with Hollywood amnesia the same person? Well, yeah, unless the soul's been replaced. But, but, but how do we know it hasn't, right? How do we really know same body, same soul? How do we really know that it's Sue Mech, right? Not somebody else. You know... In the reincarnated people, why do we even think that it's the same soul to start with? It's not like that we have soul vision, right? Anybody can just look and see, oh, that's that's Anna Frank's soul. No, you know, it's like if we do think that maybe these people are the same person, it's because they have the same memory, and that leads us to think maybe that they have the same soul, right? We can't directly see the soul, and I think that comes up. Well, you know, how do we even know if consciousness is downloaded that the soul doesn't migrate, right? So this, this idea that the soul seems unobservable, that's a slightly different thing from, oh, it just doesn't fit into the scientific view of the world, whatever that might be. But the idea that it's unobservable, that we couldn't even tell 
if it did migrate from one body to the other or left or something, that that seems a bit more unsettling. Even more unsettling to me for the soul as a, an account of personal identity is that other factors seem more important, right? We, are, we already saw this in the last slide. Well, you know, in the cases of that we think might be reincarnation, why do we think they might be reincarnation? Well, because of memories, right? Memories, having the same memories, well, that seems to be more important, right? That seems to be primary or prior to the idea of the same soul. And, and let's push this a little further. Um, now let me tell you a story to push this a little further. When I was an undergraduate, I actually saw Ian Stevenson speak. He came and gave a little talk to like a little student debate group I was in, the, the round table group. Ian Stevenson came. He talked about a lot of these cases of supposed reincarnation he had studied. Afterwards, me and some friends are hanging out at one of them, their dorms. You know, undergraduate discussion liberally fueled with beer, right? You know, right? So we're just hanging out, drinking beer, talking about, well, what do we make of what this guy Stevenson has said, right? And me and my friend Mike are, you know, arguing. We're like, well... I don't know, I don't really want to believe it, but, you know, this is pretty compelling. This is pretty unsettling. You know, our friend Tom, devout, you know, by the numbers Catholic, is like, well, no, 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 reincarnation can't be real. And, you know, Tom tried to give reasons, but it basically, you know, it seemed a lot of it came back to, well, the Catholic Church says it's not, so Tom also thinks it's not, right? But our friend John, you know, just kind of listening, just gets more and more annoyed. And finally, John says, well, who cares if it is real, right? Why should I care if my soul is reincarnated, if there even is such a thing, right? And I kind of look at him and he's like, well, look, you know, maybe some of these people remember stuff. But if most of us are reincarnated, we don't remember a thing. You know, if the soul of John is reincarnated into a guy, you know in Russia or Canada or wherever and doesn't remember ever being me, has none of my personality traits, why should I care, right? He's like, I, I, you know, even if I do have a soul and it will be reincarnated, if it doesn't have any of my memories, if it has none of my personality, if there's no connection between the type of person I am and the experiences I've had and this soul, who cares? I, just, I don't even see why this question's important. I don't see why you guys are arguing about it, right? And I think John really has gotten to the heart of the issue here, right? If, if, if someone is us, if it really is us surviving death or our consciousness... Well, we'd like it to have some connection to the type of person we are. Our experience, our life, our memories. If there's none of that, well, you know, how, how, can, how consoling would you find it if someone said, oh, I've proven the existence of a soul, but also you're not going to remember anything and it's not going to have any of your personality. Would that really comfort you very much? You know, and, and, and think about what, what even Tucker, who heads this institute that Stevenson founded, said. He's like, well, yeah, you know, even people who can remember their past lives, you know, they tend to forget it by the time they're seven or eight. You know, you talk to some kid and you say, oh, oh, you know, remember, Billy, when you, you, you remembered being... You know, this guy in India who died and Billy's like, no, I don't remember that. You and mom keep telling me about it, but I haven't remembered that for years, right? In the same way that you or I don't remember probably doing something embarrassing or memorable when we we're a kid that our folks keep talking about because we did it when we were three or four, most of these children later forget claims to remember a past life, right? 
And, you know, a lot of people who say there is reincarnation will say, well, you know, some people can remember, but all of us have been reincarnated. Most of us just don't remember, right? Well, if, if that's so, you know, I, I don't know. Why, why should we think the soul is important, right? And, you know, in other religious traditions like Christianity, Islam, some forms of Judaism, the soul might figure too. But, you know, it seems like what's important there is like, well, if our soul survives, it's not just that there's this soul stuff, but the soul does carry memory and personality. So if that's so, is it really the soul itself that's so important or is it the stuff that it carries, right? Is focusing on the soul, is it really the essence of personal identity? And if you say, if someone says to you, well, your soul will survive, but it'll have none of your memories, none of your personality, and you have this reaction my friend John had, which is who cares, which when I kind of think about it is kind of my reaction too, then whether there's a soul or not, it doesn't seem that it is what is essential to personal identity. 